Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on a piece of furniture that's actually been in my inventory for literally years. So if you guys follow me, you know that I have a building on my property. That's where I keep my inventory of furniture. And I set a goal for myself that I wanted to liquidate some of that furniture and cut my inventory down to about half. And that's just because I want to, I, I don't need it to take up so much storage space, storage space. And so this is a challenge for myself. So I'm going to do a bunch of really clean, classic makeovers. And this is one of the first pieces is, pieces in that project for myself. So I'm going to be using Wiseau One Hour Enamel. And this is a great option for fast return to use, beautiful finishes, super durable. It's one of those products that I know that I can stand behind, but still get really clean, classic finishes. So this is a great piece of furniture. It's super classic, has great details on it. And I chose one of their new colors for the finish. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to uh, do some spraying on this one. So I hope it's a good adventure for you. Let's go. Here's where I started on this piece of furniture. This was given to me by a friend literally years ago, and you know how it goes. When you have something in your storage long enough, eventually it just makes its way to the back and you kind of forget it's there. Well, that was the situation that I was dealing with, and so I set myself this goal to pull out multiple pieces, and I'm gonna go ahead and work on them at the same time and try to clear out some of my old storage. Of course, that meant starting with prep in bulk, and nobody ever enjoys prep, but this step in included cleaning several pieces at the same time. I used Greenies Cleaner, and then this one I went ahead and scuff sanded using my Surf Prep Sander just to take down the shine that was on the existing finish. I removed all of the hardware from this piece and set them aside to be cleaned. I did have a full set of hardware, and they are really nice, so those are going to go back on in the end. The other thing I did on this one while I had my sander out was I changed the grit of my paper and I went ahead and sanded the top down to raw wood. I thought this look would be really pretty if I left a wood stained top and did a painted body so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I removed the dust from my piece and now I'm going to go ahead and spray this one in two coats of primer. This is Wiseau primer in light gray. I did need to dilute it slightly to be able to go through my sprayer because primer tends to be a little bit thicker than paint. It really helped to do multiple pieces at one time because I set up a spray area and then I literally just sprayed primer for over the course of a day on several different pieces. And this was one of them. I let my primers dry for 24 hours and then came back and gave it a second coat. It is recommended to use Wiseau primer underneath one hour enamel and that's to help with the adhesion of the one hour enamel. Of course, I want the most beautiful finish possible on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow recommendations. I also tend to use primer a lot on my pieces just because I really like the way a coat of paint lies over a coat of primer. It also saves me on coats of paint. This is going to help me get better coverage with my paint overall and I should be able to have great coverage with just two coats of paint versus needing more when you don't use a primer. Wiseau primer is stain blocking and a gripping primer in one. So it's really the only primer that I need to solve any problems I might have on this dresser. And so I'm using this primer both for adherence and also in case any stains might come through over time from any of the wood I might have exposed during my scuff sanding. Here's what this piece looked like after two coats of my primer. I got great coverage. It's super clean. I didn't really need to do any repairs. And so next I'm ready to go ahead and put some paint on. Don't judge my work sink. This is a workspace and it got a ton of use this week. Let's go ahead and put my spray gun together and get it ready for paint. So the first thing that I need to do is go ahead and put the tip on my gun. And I do this by compressing the handle and I'm going to turn that nozzle on and then tighten it using this tool. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the head on the sprayer. Next up comes the hopper on the gun. Now I'm using this gun as an example, but this is exactly the way that my Apollo sprayer goes together. So multiple sprayers will assemble exactly the same way. It's really three pieces, the hopper, the nozzle, and then the tip on the gun. Um, and then I always want to make sure that I strain my paint. Even if I'm using a brand new container of paint, which this is, I will run it through a strainer so that it gets any chunks or old portions of paint that might have settled to the bottom. You don't want those to go through your sprayer. One hour enamel is really nice because it's usually sprayable right out of the container. So after I strain this, I shouldn't need to dilute it at all. If you do dilute one hour enamel, it's not recommended to add any more than 5% of water. You can compromise the formula after that. So my next step after I've strained my paint is I am ready to spray. Now this gun is hooked up to an air compressor. It's a fairly large air compressor 
but it stays connected all the time. So it's fairly convenient and easy to use. Um, my husband prefers this gun. I usually will pull out my Apollo sprayer, but since he's helping me with this process, I'm going to go ahead and use his choice. This gun is made by Husky and it's connected to a DeWalt compressor. I'm going to go ahead and spray my one hour enamel in small passes and lightly overlap the last one with the next step. This color is called Celtic Fog and it's a soft greenish blue. It's just a shade different than my primer. I am gonna do two coats of this paint and I'm gonna let them dry at least an hour or two in between coats. I'm spraying indoors in a climate controlled space. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and strip this top down from the existing finish. I know I want a wood stain top on this. Now, most people would be saying, why would you add stripper when you've got paint on the body? Well, I'm not necessarily recommending you do it in this order because now I need to be extremely careful that I don't get any of the stripper onto the front of the body of my piece, which I definitely was. This is Greenie's stripper and it's an eco-friendly stripper. I'm gonna spread it over the top of my piece just using a natural bristle chip brush. And then I'm gonna let this sit on here for at least 30 minutes. The longer I let it sit, the more effective it will have a tendency to be, but I found on this one that 30 minutes was enough to get through my coating. Next, I'm going to come back with a metal blade scraper and I'm going to scrape in the direction of my grain and pull all that old clear coat off. This is so satisfying to watch. After I'm done scraping off that old coating, I do need to neutralize my stripper. I just used um, Greenies cleaner and then I went ahead and sanded it down to the raw wood and I came to this beautiful veneer. Next up, I'm going to apply a coat of this Minwax pre-stain conditioner. This goes on really easily. It's a thin watery formula that I just brush on and massage it into the wood. I'm going to come back after about five minutes and I'll wipe away the excess pre-stain conditioner. This is going to help get my uh, wood ready to accept stain. It's going to help it accept stain a little bit more evenly. After I've wiped back that pre-stain conditioner, I'm ready to come back and start staining my wood. I chose this color from Minwax. This is their penetrating stain and this color is Carl Dark Walnut. This is one of my favorites to use. It's a beautiful deep rich color. With my top all stain, I do want to accentuate some pieces on the body of this. It has some great details like these acanthus leaves that are on the side. And I'm going to use that, do that using Wiseau Glaze. So this is Glaze in Dark Walnut and I'm going to wipe it on and massage it into all the details of this leaf. I'm going to wipe it back using a dry rag first and then I'll come back and wipe back the remainder using a wet wipe. You can see right away how that dark glaze just settles into all those details and really brings them to life. This is a simple way that you can accentuate details on your piece. It works great over the one hour enamel. So uh, the one hour enamel, you can use all your same accent products that you would over regular chalky style paints like glaze, um, gilding waxes, uh, transfers, all those kinds of things work great over the one hour enamel as well. One Hour Enamel is a great product for these makeovers that I want to do, and that's because it doesn't require any clear coat. And so I'm not required to clear coat that. Um, so I also don't need to clear coat the glaze. That is self-sealing as well. Now I'm going to apply some gold gilding wax, and that is also self-sealing. So none of these products require sealing, so I'm saving myself a step. I did need to wipe a coat of clear over the top on this piece, but other than that, it was ready to go. Some of the other benefits of the, of the one hour enamel paint is that it does cure up to 90% in four hours. You can recoat within one to two hours. And this is a great product for projects that you want to return to use fairly quickly. So kitchens and things like that, that you don't have a lot of time to wait on. It's also extremely durable. This stuff will stand up to just about any scratch test that you can give it. Here is my finished project. I love this color. It's absolutely stunning. I went ahead and staged this with some coordinating accent pieces. What do you guys think? This project is complete. One down out of my inventory now to put it up for sale. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at Brush by brandy.com and if you enjoyed this video i hope you'll click that subscribe button for weekly painting tutorials here at brush by brandy on youtube